Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be talking about the optional argument syntax in Racket. So for one particular problem in homework one, the sorted problem, you might notice that there's this kind of funny period in the middle of the arguments. Um, well, first let's read through it and see what it says to do. So it says sorted takes a list and returns true if the top level items are sorted according to the given comparison operator compare. So what's compare? Well compare is optional as indicated by the period in the definition. The default comparison operator is less than or equal to. Less than or equal to for numbers. Here are some examples. First with the compare argument given. So you can see in each of these examples there's a list that corresponds to this list. There's no period there but the fact that they include this second argument indicates that that is what repre uh, compare represents. So here they're using less than it is true because it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, which is sorted according to less than. It does not assort sorted according to greater than because uh, 1 is not greater than 2, 2 is not greater than 3, etc. So it returns false. When it is, uh, so when the second argument is not included, so here you can see they just include a list. There's no second argument to represent the compare. In that case, the argument says the default, uh, the the problem says the default comparison operator is less than or equal to. So in your code you have to write it such that you check whether this compare, uh, whether the second argument is passed in for compare or whether you should be using less than or equal to. The way to do this um, is first you need to know that when something is passed in as compare with this optional argument syntax um, it is put into a list. So Racket sees this optional argument, this period in the arguments, and everything that is passed in after a list is put into another list. So let's, I'll prove it for you. Um, here, we're just going to output compare question mark. This is not what you actually want to do in the problem, but it's gonna help us for our purposes. So we've said above, we've said in our definitions, I just want this function to output whatever I put, uh, whatever it thinks compare question mark represents. So say I run sorted, I have to give it a list, and then I'm going to give it nothing for my comparison operator, or for my compare question mark. Oh, sorry, sorted with a question mark. I give it my list, and then nothing for compare. It thinks that compare is an empty list. Say we give sorted an empty list, and then we give it the number one. Well, now it thinks compare is a list with one in it let's call sorted on an empty list and then how about the word hello for the string hello now it thinks that compare is an empty, uh, a list with the string hello in it so essentially when they pass in something like less than it's going to take that and put it in a list for you the way you can get it from that list as we di uh, discussed in the list functions episode or walkthrough is to use car so I can say something like well instead of just you know compare, I want you to take the car of compare. That way I can kind of access whatever they give me in uh, as their second argument. So you might want to do something to check whether they pass in a second argument. So you can say something like if if compare is empty, if empty compare, well then let's do this. And if not, let's do this. That will allow you to to accommodate the optional argument. I'll do an example for you down here. First, let me uh, set this back to empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function to output a list full of ones, and the length is going to be whatever they input as input length. Okay, so this should be pretty easy to do. Um, I'll say if equal to zero, zero, the input length, so if they want it to be of length zero, then I'm just going to output an empty list. Otherwise, well the number is probably greater than zero, we're assuming that its input length must be a positive integer, be a positive integer. Okay, so if it's not zero then it's greater than zero. In that case, well we need another if here because we're going to start making our list, right? We're going to say something like cons blank onto the recursive call, make list length, you know, subtract one from the input length, 
and put length. And then we're going to call, put the list contents there again, or the car of the list contents to make sure that we call it correctly. Because remember, it's inside of a list. But we don't know what to put here. It depends on if they pass in something for list contents, right? Because I said if they don't pass anything, I'm going to make it a one. If they do pass in something, well, I'm going to put, I'm going to fill my list with whatever they pass in. So output a list full of ones of input length unless they pass in something as list contents, in which case I will fill the list with input length length copies of list contents. Okay, so to do that I have to check. I have to say something like if empty list contents. And if it is empty then what do I want to do? Well that means that they didn't pass anything in, so I'm going to fill my list with ones. So cons one onto make list length, decrease the length by one, pass in the car, I mean I guess we don't have to pass in anything because in this case they didn't pass anything into us. So let me close my parenthesis. In the second case, list contents is not empty. So remember, if has a condition, what to do if true, what to do if false. So in this case, our condition is false, list contents is not empty. So we're going to want to cons the car of list contents onto our recursive call, which is make list length minus minus input length 1 and then we do have to in this case include the car of list contents to pass it back into our recursive call okay I'm gonna run this and we'll see if it works so here we're gonna make list length first time we're just gonna give it length 5 it now puts a list of ones length 5 but now if we pass it the optional argument make list length 5 and then how about this time we fill it with the word hello, or the string, oh, oops, make list length 5, hello, uh oh, we got an error, application, not a procedure, oh, so car of list contents is an error, so what happened was, I saw this parenthesis before list contents, list contents is not a procedure, so it shouldn't have a parenthesis before it, cons car of list contents, close parenthesis after, on to make list length. Make sure I properly close my parenthesis at the end. Looks like I have a couple extra. Okay, let's try again. Now we run make list length five hello. There we go, five hellos. So it's taking this hello, putting it into an empty list, or putting it into a list that now has the word hello in it. And when I ask if list contents is empty, it's going to say no it's not, it's going to take the car of list contents, the car of the list with hello in it, and cons that onto my recursive call. It'll do that five times until the input length is zero because I decrease it by one each time and give me this list of five hellos. I hope that gave you some sort of idea of how to approach this sorted question. So always if you have questions uh, or you want help with this, come into office hours, email the CS201 help email or post on Piazza. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.